guys, Lem Stars. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a kimono and a short. So this is a two-piece set, okay? Both made out of the same Ankara fabric. I use a total of um, three yards of Ankara fabric for this. So if you want to see how I make this lovely kimono and short set, definitely keep on watching. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I'm going to start off with drafting the back piece first. So I just drew the baseline at the top of the fabric and then I marked the length of my kimono which is 39 inches, okay? You can decide for yours to be longer or shorter than this. It all depends on you. I'm just going ahead to extend that line. And then from the baseline again, I'm just marking the bust point which is 10 inches. And I'm also marking the under bust 13 inches and the hip line which is 23 inches. Then I'm extending all those lines. Now I'm dividing the shoulder measurement by two. The shoulder is 14 inches divided by two. That'll give me seven inches. And then from that point, I'm just marking the sleeve length. Now the sleeve length is 12 inches. Now this kimono, the sleeve is actually going to be an extended sleeve meaning that it's joined to the actual kimono you don't cut out the sleeve separately now i divided the bust circumference by four placed it on the bust point marked that and added two inches allowance i also divided the hip circumference by four marked that on the hip line and I added two inches allowance to that as well don't bother about the under bust line because you're not going to need that measurement now for the hem i also marked the hip circumference divided by four and then I added two inches allowance to that as well. And I'm just connecting all those points with a straight line. Now from the baseline downwards, I'm just marking um, 10 inches, okay? That's how wide the sleeve is going to be, okay? That's the round sleeve. Now her round sleeve is actually 12 inches, which divided by two is six inches, okay? So I added an extra four inches to that round sleeve to make the sleeve very, very wide, okay? Now I'm just connecting the um, round sleeve to the baseline, okay, so that my sleeve forms well, okay. And now this is the outline we have basically, but we want to go ahead and carve out that part where the sleeve connects with the um, rest of the kimono. So just use your curved ruler and just make a curve, okay. Like I said, this is an extended sleeve, okay. This is a kimono made with an extended sleeve. Now for the width of my neck, I'm taking 3 inches and for the depth, I'm taking 2 inches. And now I drew a curved line to connect those two points to create my um, back neckline. And now what I'm doing is I'm just cutting that neckline open and then I'm cutting along the um, baseline, okay? And then I'm also cutting along the rest of the outline I marked. Now this is what the back piece looks like Now I'm just going to go ahead and fold my fabric so I can cut my front piece. Now I'm just placing my back piece on top of my folded fabric so I can cut my front piece okay. Now I'm making sure that I have um, an extra one and a half inches for the um, you know at the fold there so that I can have my you know overlap for my front piece. You know that the kimono is open in front so you want it to overlap just a bit. Now apart from that one and a half inches I have at the front. On that fold i'm just going to go ahead and just cut that same outline that i had for my back i'm cutting that same outline for my front piece i also marked the armhole line on my front piece as well and you can see that on the fold okay on that one and a half inch fold i have now for my neckline for the front piece the width is the same with the back piece so i'm just marking that same um, um width and then i'm just drawing a diagonal line to connect that point with the um, armhole line I marked on my front piece and then I'm cutting along the fold and then cutting along that diagonal line to create you know the opening for my front piece and the neckline for my front piece as well now after drafting I'm going to unfold the back piece and make sure that the right side is facing upwards and then I'll place one piece of the 
one part of the front piece on top of the back piece right size facing and then i'm going to join them at the shoulders with half inch seam allowance and then along the sides with one inch seam allowance okay so right sides facing front piece and back piece i'm going to also place the other um front piece on top of the back piece and also do the same thing join them along the shoulder with half inch seam allowance and along the side with one inch seam allowance okay i'm just marking it so it's easier for me to sew i'm also going to go ahead and pin it and then i'll sew along those lines now for the band that i'm going to use to turn the neck of my kimono i'm just marking three inches as the width but then the length depends on the length of your kimono okay the length of this band depends on the length of your kimono but the width is three inches now you want to make this band as long as possible because it's going to go all the way around your neck okay that's all the way around the neck of the kimono all the way to the hem of the kimono just hold on i'm going to explain better in a minute now what you want to do is fold the band and iron it flat okay fold it and iron it flat now this is how the band is going to be attached i'm going to start from the hem of one side of the front piece okay from the hem there and i'm going to join it all the way up to the neck across the neck and then all the way down to the other um hem of the front piece okay so the other side of the front piece so when you're sewing this you want to separate the kimono so just take only one side of the front piece okay like this just take one side of the front piece and then place the belt right sides facing okay place the belt like this making sure that the edge of the belt aligns with the edge of the kimono and then just go ahead and sew it all the way around the neck and to the other um, hem of the front piece now once you're done this is what you're going to have i went ahead to weave the allowance i got and then i made sure that the allowance was facing the kimono side okay which is the kimono side and not the where the belt is okay so the allowance should face where the kimono is and not where the belt is and then after that i went ahead to just top stitch so that the belt stays in plate in place <laughs> and it's nice and flat okay now moving on to the shorts the length of my shorts is 18 inches so that's what i'm marking i'm just marking the baseline and then i'm just going to go ahead and extend that line and then next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and mark my crotch depth now i've written the crotch depth formula at the top of the screen it's simply your hip circumference divided by four my client's um, hip circumference is 39 inches divided by four that gave me 9.75 inches so what i simply did was i rounded it up to the nearest whole number which is 10 inches so the crotch depth is 10 inches so from the baseline downwards i just marked 10 inches now from the fold inward i'm marking one inch on the waistline and then on the hip line i'm just marking the fold now i'm just dividing my client's waist circumference by four and then i'm placing that on the baseline which is now the waistline placing that on the waistline and then i'm marking that point now because i'm not going to be adding any dart to the front piece of my shorts i'm just adding only half inch for my seam allowance now if you're going to add a dart please please add two inches for your dart and your seam allowance okay now on the hip line i'm just marking her lap circumference divided by two and then i also added half inch seam allowance as well now for the hem of my shorts i just took out two inches from the lap circumference the last circumference is 24 inches minus two that gave me 22 inches then i divided that by two which gave me 11 inches and that's what i marked on the hem now i'm going to go ahead and connect all those points And then I'm going to go ahead and cut along those lines. Now after cutting the front piece i'm going to go ahead and fold my fabric again so i can cut my back piece okay so i'm just placing the 
front piece on top of the back on top of the folded fabric okay so i can cut my back piece and i'm making sure that i have at least four inches extra okay from the crotch and then i'm just going to go ahead and just cut off the excess fabric i'm also cutting the folded fabric you know following the outline of my waistline as well as the um, side okay so i'm just cutting the folded fabric with the same outline for the front and now from that curve on the front piece i'm just marking one and a half inches out this is the back piece so you need the allowance to be on the back piece okay so all of the allowance you need is on the back piece so i just marked that and then i kept marking that one and a half inches all the way just before i got to that crotch line and then from the hem upwards i'm marking two inches allowance okay two inches allowance from the crotch line downwards to the hem is two inches allowance but from the crotch line upwards is one and a half inches okay now from the crotch line i stopped marking the allowance two inches upwards from the crotch line and two inches downwards okay so stop marking the allowance two inches before the crotch line at the top and at the bottom okay now i'm just going to go ahead and just cut that out okay and now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to fold um you know that allowance from the hem all the way up to the crotch so that i can get the exact point where the crotch of the front piece meets with the back piece okay i need to get that exact point and then i'll mark it with my chalk now once i get that point i'm just going to go ahead and place my tape from that crotch point there and then i'm going to mark three inches allowance can you see that my tape is slanted a bit because my tape is aligned with the previous point i marked okay with my chalk when i folded the fabric now once i have that three inch mark i'm just going to go ahead and connect it with the other allowance i had marked okay so once i've connected it i can just go ahead now and cut that out now for my pockets from the baseline i'm going to go down by six inches and i'm going to create a tiny notch only on the front piece remember that your pocket's only going to be on the front piece okay? now from the edge of the fabric inwards i'm just marking four inches now if you had put a dart okay if you had, if you had put your dart allowance then mark four inches but if you do not put that like i did not put a dart on the front piece please mark two inches inwards for your pockets okay i made a mistake here but i corrected it later and changed that um notch points to two inches from the edge of the fabric okay so please take note of that so just fold that and iron it flat now for the band for my shorts i'm just marking a baseline now the length of the band is 34 inches which is the um waist circumference of my client plus four inches okay my client's waist circumference is 30 inches plus four inches that's 34 inches and now the width of my band is five inches so i'm just marking that and then i'm going to go ahead and cut along those lines Now for the pocket i'm just folding my fabric okay once and i'm also going to fold it twice because i want to cut the two pockets at the same time now the width of my pocket is seven inches okay that's what i'm marking now marking that at the top and at the bottom so i can get a straight line and then the length of my pocket is nine and a half inches so from the top there i'm just marking nine and a half inches which is the length of my pocket now i'm also going to go ahead and just curve one edge not the folded edge but the other part i'm just curving that corner and then i'm cutting along that line now 
and these are my pockets okay both of them now i'm going to take one of my front pieces and i'm going to place my pockets making sure that the side that is folded is inward okay so it's facing inward when i place my front piece on top okay can you see how i placed it T take pay attention to the way i placed it okay and now i told you earlier that i had made a mistake and marked four inches for the notch of my pocket on the waist but now i corrected my mistake and marked two inches because i did not put any dart on my front piece but then the six inch notch i created from the waist downwards remains the same okay now i'm just folding the piece okay to create an impression that i would use to um cut my pocket and insert it now i'm just marking along that fold but on the pocket okay so that fold i made on the front piece i'm just marking that on the pocket okay and then i'm going to go ahead and lift my pocket up so leave the top part of my pocket and I'm going to cut along that line, okay? Then for my front piece, I'm also going to go ahead and cut along that fold. And this is what we're going to have. Now I'm going to take out my pocket and then I'm going to make sure that the right side of my pocket faces the right side of my front piece, okay? This is the wrong side here and making i'm making sure that the right side of the pocket matches or faces the right side of my front piece now with the parts i cut aligning together i'm just going to go ahead and join my pocket to my front piece with half inch seam allowance okay and then once i'm done with that i'm just going to open up the pocket, and then i'm going to make sure that the allowance is facing the pocket and then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch. Now this will make the pocket stay inside, okay? You don't want your pockets to be coming out when you don't want it to come out, okay? So this will make your pocket stay in place. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to fold the pocket back the same way it was when I started. Just fold it back the same way. And then I'm going to go ahead and tag this point here. And then sew the top part of the pocket to the top part of my front piece okay so i'm going to go ahead and tack this this part of the pocket by the side and then for the top part i'm just going to go ahead and sew the pocket to the waist of my front piece and now i'm going to go ahead and flip my piece to the wrong side and then i'm going to go ahead and just close the bottom part of the pocket by sewing it down now remember that i've already weaved my pocket so the bottom part is already weaved all i'm going to do now is just close it so that my client's money will not fall on the floor when she puts it inside her pockets okay <laughs> so yeah i'm just going to go ahead and just close it with half inch seam allowance okay and this is what it looks like i'll do the same thing now for my other um front piece now when i take out my pocket can you see how neat it is very very neat now i'm going to place my back piece okay one of them and then i'm going to place the other back piece on top of the other one with the right sides facing each other now i'm going to go ahead and measure what i have on the waist and i'm going to divide that by two okay this will help me to put my dart remember that i'm putting my dart only on my back piece i'm not putting my dart on well, I'm not putting any dart on the front piece. So once I just mark the midpoint of that, I'm just going to go ahead and mark the length of my dart, which is five inches. So I'm just creating that dart line there. I'll do the same thing for the other side of my back piece. Or for the other back piece, rather. Just marking the five inch length and then I'm drawing my dart line. Now to put in my dart, I'm simply going to fold my piece along that line and then i'm going to sew my dart my dart width is actually half inch okay so i just used half inch when sewing the dart and i'm just placing my one of my back pieces on the table and then i'm placing my one of my front pieces on top of the back piece with the right sides facing each other and then i'm going to join the sides together with one inch seam allowance i'll do the same thing for the other two pieces Place them right sides facing the front and the back piece and then make sure that the sides align. Then join the sides together with one inch seam allowance. 
And after that, I'm going to open up my piece. This is what we have. I'm going to place the other piece that I've also joined right sides facing with this one. And then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew from the waist all the way to the crotch. Same thing with the other side from the waist all the way to the crotch with half inch seam allowance. Okay. Now, once we're done with that, this is what we're going to have. Now, all I'm going to do now is open up my piece. Okay. By holding the side seams, both side seams, just open it up and you see that your your shot is practically done. <laughs> Can you see what it looks like now? So what we're going to do is we're going to align the crotches together. So the crotch seams, we're going to align them together. And then sew from the crotch to one to one hem and from the crotch again to the other hem. And this is what we have once we are done. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up that um, seam, just a bit of it. That's where I'm going to be setting my zipper. This is at the back, okay, of my shorts. I'm going to be setting my zipper there and I'm also going to insert my band there as well. So I just opened a bit of it. Now for my band, I'm just folding it lengthwise and I'm going to go ahead and iron it flat. Now taking my piece again, I'm going to go ahead and join my band. Now I'm placing the band right at the edge there. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the edge of the band, that's the, the edge that is not folded, aligns with the waist of my short. Then I'm going to go ahead and sew it together with half inch seam allowance as you see me do right now. I'll make sure I sew it all the way till I get to the other um, side of my back piece. And then after that, I went ahead to just weave the allowance so that it's nice and neat. Can you see what it looks like? Now I'm making sure that my allowance is facing the short part and not the, the band. Making sure that the allowance is facing the short part. And then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch. And this is what we have once we're done. All I'm going to do now is just fold the hem and then sew it in place. And I'm also going to put my zipper at the back. Guys, as you can see, it's already dark because this outfit and filming and everything took a long time. It took all day. So please, please, please subscribe, okay? This is the finished look. I really, really love how it turned out. My client really, really loved it as well. Thank you so much. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Bye.